there's only one place to start, which is with, with Keaton. Um, I think we all want to know what that filming process was, was like for you. Um, for me, it was good because me personally, I don't like play football to a big level. So most of my games that I've played has been school games where there's like no fans. So I've never experienced what Freddie went through. So it was a challenge for me. But yeah, I enjoyed it. How did the you know like the production team Sam Joe look after you during that whole process? Um, so before the filming actually started, um, I was talked to about it, made sure like everything was okay. I said, yeah, I'm up for it. So they all like guided me through it. And yeah, it was good. That's brilliant. So did they speak to you whilst they were like writing the actual storyline itself? Yeah, well, um, it was written due to one of the writers' brothers, I think it was. What he's been through through football, so. Yeah, when it was being written, I was spoken to about it, made sure everything was okay. And I said, yeah. Oh, that's good to hear. And I think it's time to open it up to everybody else. Um, we'll start with you, Troy, as you were trying to uh, duck, duck it earlier. Um, <laughs> what do you think about the actual depiction of the racist incident in that episode? I mean, first of all, I'd like to applaud everybody that's put this together. Um, it, it was so authentic. Um, it was so real. Um, it resonated quite a lot with me, to be honest, having my own personal experience of coaching in the environment and having a team of young people being racially abused, um, having to deal with it on a regular occurrence and support people through the process. So my title enables me to talk to uh, players who you know, have, have been through the process of being racially abused and been through the other side of the process as well. And that other side of the process is trying to prove it that's why it was, you know, being having to prove that you've been racially abused, um, and that's why it resonated so much. Um, I don't know why you're sitting here nervous because you was amazing, in there. <laughs> um, and kind of flooded back a lot of things in my own mind about a, an incident six years ago when, basically, which ended my coaching journey because of an incident of racism that and the way it was handled. So for me, it took me back. Um, took me back to that period of time and at least it made me younger but resonating with those experiences is not a nice place to be in it's not a nice place to have to recall um, when you have as I did 16 15 16 14 15 year olds who had to experience something very similar and the whole process I mean I feel as the coach I feel like I let them down because we didn't get the desired result and the desired result was hopefully <laughs> the words of my young people who had to endure monkey chants and monkey noises was for them to be heard and their truth to be told. And that that's not a nice place for anybody to be in and it's not a nice place when you're almost the, the leader of those people to have to explain to them that the experiences that they heard have basically been, they've been dismissed, you know, and that, incident of mine will always, always stay with me. And that's why there was moments, I've got to be honest, there was moments there when I got emotional because of having to recall that. And even as an actor, watching you go through it and watching you play the role so well, just brought things back into me that, listen, we're in 2021, aren't we? Uh, I'll leave it there because I'll, I'll talk all night no. if you want me to. Anybody else want to chip in at this point? Yeah, I mean, to reiterate what Troy said, I think, um, obviously, it's uh, unbelievably put together. You know, even the fitness drills didn't make me miss playing football because it was so realistic. <laughs> it really was. It was realistic when I was watching the drills and stuff like that. But, you know, I think these things are so triggering, you know, for, especially for all of us sitting here, and I'm sure everybody in the audience today has been through different type of experiences. And so for someone like myself that's a former professional footballer that's now gone into the broadcasting industry, it's like... In my experience of playing, I never really felt like I was, it was never like monkey chants or people outwardly saying stuff. And I played all over the world, Spain, Italy, America for 10 years. But a situation happened to myself and Ennio de Maluco five years ago. That situation really brought that back for me there because I didn't feel like our teammates supported us. And that is something, as Troy said, you know, he mentioned the experience he had. It stays with you for the rest of your life. And it's something that doesn't make you feel good because... You know, for people that are not aware of it, I won't bore everyone with the story because it was something that was pretty highly regarded in, in the news and stuff, was we had a manager, you know, that had said some racist comments and, you know, I was the only person to stand up for any in that situation and I never played for England again. Now, whether people think that's based upon me not being good enough, that's the manager's decision and stuff like that, but I don't think it was. And that's something that 
I sleep at night knowing I did the right thing. You know, we went to the House of Parliament, the House of Commons, and we had to prove we were telling the truth. But it's not easy feeling like you're ostracized based upon telling the truth. And I almost feel like I've had to almost reinvent myself again for companies to actually employ me. You know, I work on Sky now, talk sport, everything. You're probably sick, sick of seeing me. But, you know, it, it, it's one of those things where I think I had to almost remove myself from people thinking I'm controversial for actually just telling the truth. And if I would do it for any one of my teammates. And so watching, you know, the, the two episodes today really brought back memories because I don't think we were backed enough by our teammates. I think it's um, obviously it's horrible to hear you kind of admit that, but I think that's kind of the whole the whole point of this TV show is to kind of bring those topics to the fore. And as you both touched upon, it seems that it's the default option to think that you have to prove that you're telling the truth instead of being supported by not just your teammates, but the FA, the network around you. It seems to think, oh, actually, no, we'll only support you if you can prove that what you're claiming is true. Yeah, sorry. Absolutely. And I think as well, that's why I don't particularly work a lot in women's football at this moment in time, because it triggers me. You know, I work a little bit and people say, oh, why are you not doing, you know, women's football? Because it doesn't make me feel good. And, I'll, and I think today is important to be honest about how, you know, we all feel because I think it, for, for change to happen, we have to be honest, you know. And I think people, it's difficult to do the right thing sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. And standing alone, you know, doing, being myself, it's difficult sometimes. I'm a woman, you know, I'm black, I'm gay. So for some people, that's a lot for people to handle. But thankfully, I'm around the right people that, you know, believe in what I do. But I just think that, it is difficult sometimes because even though people can see me now and they see me flying and doing really well in life, it's something I think about nearly every day. Why didn't I play for England again? You know, who should have, would have, could have done more for me? And that's something that I, I do carry with me, but I try to kill people with kindness as opposed to But that's, you know, a horrible, being nasty. that's a horrible legacy of what you've experienced that five years down the line, you can't even enjoy women's football at the level that you'd like to. Yeah, no, I go and I do the games, you know, I do commentary, um, I do the punditry at the side of the pitch and I see people that... You know, I was best friends with for 17 years. I don't speak to anymore based upon the fact that they didn't do enough for me. So, you know, like I said, I sleep at night knowing I did the right thing, but it's not easy carrying that around with you. And I think, thankfully, the right people know that we told the truth, we proved we told the truth, and, you know, thankfully, in the end, justice was done. Before I bring in Ify and Edlene, I think we should stay on this topic a little bit. What do you think, especially in regards to the TV show, about the aftermath of the racist incident, where they're all in the dressing room. What did you think about that scene in particular? And th this is for everyone, but obviously just for you in particular, just off that. Yeah, I, I mean, it didn't. It was really like realistic because there was never a situation like that that happened on my England team. It was more like outside of the the, the training field or the pitch. But I do think that there's always a couple of people that might not understand, and I think it still happens now. You know, where people are saying, you know, we should play the game, but I honestly believe that they did the right thing. I think in this day and age, we see so many teams, you know, the England national team, the men's team, they go to Hungary, they go to Czech Republic and they get racially abused. And everybody says, you know, it's powerful to stay on the field, don't leave the pitch. But then what's happening? Because I don't see much changes happening by them necessarily staying out there and having to go through that. So I think it was really realistic. And like I said, it really triggered me in a way. But I'm glad that, that in the end they did the right thing. But there's always going to be someone that might not agree with, what's the kid's name, Will? Liam. One kid, Liam, sorry, that didn't agree with it. I know he's only acting, but, yeah. you know, um, that didn't agree with it. But there are people that will feel that way, and it will be about them, but it's never really about anybody apart from the person that it's happened to. I think sometimes people make it about themselves when actually it's about the person that's been racially abused or discriminated against. How, how did everyone else feel about the dressing room incident? Ify? Yeah, um, well, just to reiterate, first and foremost, what a great job's done by the acting production team to put this together because it is a really powerful piece <coughs> and it does it, like Leanne's saying it, it does it triggers you you start thinking about incidents happened when I was playing and I can't remember where, well I know where I was playing but I'm probably not going to name the team but um, your momentum takes you off your pitch right into the crowd the, the, where the home fans were heard something said and there were stewards and police around and and somewhere amongst you, you kind of bury it a little bit because you go on and you play the rest of the game and stuff like this. But you remember these incidents and you remember another one, you remember another one. So it's a bit of a coping mechanism. But I think anyone who's been through it knows how de dehumanising it is. And the, the biggest thing I would say, that was me playing 20 years ago now. The biggest thing now, and they showed on the film, is um, the allyship now that's come through it. And I think it was mentioned in the, in the show, um, one a really important line, I picked up on it straight away. Some things are bigger than football. The, the girl said, and she was talking about it, and that, for me, is the key to it. So you've got a team there, girls and boys, different races, and everything now. And obviously, the, the captain's meant to give that alternative viewpoint, but what you saw in the whole of the team 
is that allyship. So all the incidents I remember, and probably Leanne's referring to, we didn't have it. It was swept under the carpet. It wasn't discussed. Nothing happened. No change. But now you can see the younger generations, the players now, who we speak to, the players, using the platforms and some of the most vocal advocates. When we, So I'm probably going off topic now that we'll discuss Not later, talking about um, taking the knee, for example, which we talked about at the beginning of the season. Are we going to do it? Are we not? And we spoke to the captains. They wanted to do it. And some of the biggest advocates of that were people like Harry Maguire and Ben Mee. So you got that allyship, which we never used to have, that, that exposure, that vulnerability that you had 20 years ago isn't there. So for me, that's a big change. It's a big positive because we always get this extension. What are we going to do? What do you think about it? And actually, it's not up to us, is it? You know, what powers do we have? We're limited. We'll try this and this and this. But actually, some of those powers have to come uh, above and beyond us. But I think that, that power of allyship, the power of togetherness, um, and going down some of the squads like I did yesterday in pre-season, just reiterating that message to the dressing rooms is really powerful. And that's the thing we just keep to keep lighting on. Be supportive to your teammates in all those circumstances. Can I just mention, yeah. if you don't Yeah, mind, go for it. Do you mind if I call you Freddie just for this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think the pressure... Sorry, my voice is loud, but I don't think the pressure should be on any individual that has been victimised, by the way, to make a decision, to make a decision of that magnitude to define whether the team walks off the pitch, continues to, to play, goes back into the changing room. I don't think that's fair because when you are experiencing trauma, your, your thought process has gone. It's gone. You're not rational. You don't see... So I'm looking at an audience today and I wouldn't see the audience in the same way. I would see blurs. So there's one, one little element and I like the way it was done in the documentary, in, in the drama, but I would say that there's no pressure on an individual to make that decision because that's, unf that's actually applying more pressure alongside the traumatic experience pressure as well. Sorry, Edna. No, no. no just to say I'd, I'd agree with, with Troy and from a kind of FA standpoint, of course, we're not kind of in dressing rooms with teams across the entirety of the football pyramid, but with the England senior men's teams, if I look at pre-Hungary, one of the things that we do spend a lot of time doing is having conversations about what is the decision that might be made should this incident happen and we do that to Troy's point where you know the emotion isn't there it's not you're just in the moment you've just experienced the trauma um, and the whole point is actually you can have that discussion as a team and say do we want to be a team that continues playing do we want to be a team that decides we're going to um, speak to our coach and, and no longer play um, and the whole point is then that we check and challenge that in those in those moments and in the instances when it happens right so you've had the discussion as a team you've understood what people's perspectives are for me it's too late to be having that discussion in that moment in the dressing room after something's just happened I think we need to be doing more across football and across the various teams to be having those conversations earlier on because then you can make a more rational decision to, to Troy's point and, and a decision that isn't fueled purely by emotion or anger or upset or whatever it is you're, you're feeling in that moment. Um, I think it's also about recognising and understanding that we have to do more post those incidents to support individuals who have gone through that experience. And we, we often kind of put our arms around people, but actually, like all of the guys have said on the stage today, years and years and years on, you still are remembering that. You're still having an impact of that. For some people, that trauma is still there. And so for me, making sure that that support is in place post playing and, and for some instances years and years and years on is really really critical because it's not just in that moment and the two days after um, having experienced discriminatory abuse that you, you feel horrible actually it can last it can last a lifetime of, as we've heard today. So I think my favourite part of the show is actually when Teo after they've um, walked off the pitch um, and the following day and he says actually do you know what at the time I was torn but now I've realised that we made the best decision and that alludes to exactly what you're saying. When you're in the maelstrom of the moment, there's so many emotions going on and you're competitive and you want to win, there's always going to be a part of you that wants to stay out on the football pitch. But surely the long-term emotional trauma that you're inflicting upon yourself, it's never going to be worth it. And I think sometimes when players say, yeah, but we can beat the racists, mm. but what happens if you lose? I think it's too simplistic uh, an argument. I'm not too sure what you guys think. For me, I think it's like, um, I can't remember whether it was Troy or, or if you said it, I think it's not up to... I'm not a player, I'm not playing in the England setup. I'm not playing in a, in a local team. 
if I'm the coach, I don't know if I feel comfortable saying to somebody, this is how you should feel and this is whether you should or shouldn't keep playing on. That's why for me, it does need to be a team discussion. I don't think it should be down to that individual level like, like Troy um, alluded to. For me, asking somebody who's just been victimised to be the person to then take that on their shoulders for the entirety of their team is difficult. Um, but for me, I think it's also really difficult if you're not the person who's on that pitch being screamed at or receiving that abuse to be the one to say, this is what the decision is. For, for you as an individual, because we don't know, everybody feels differently. I might be racially abused and feel a different way to Leanne, different way to, to any of you on this, this pitch, but I think we need to have a discussion knowing who we are and knowing what our team's about and then make a collective decision. Can I make a point? Yeah. Um, Go on, Leanne. Go on. No, I just wanted to say as well, to, to piggyback off of that, everybody feels differently and sometimes it, it reacts, people react to different times, right? So I found that what happened to us before, I get messages from my former teammates now. You know, and obviously with all the George Floyd stuff that George Floyd stuff that happened, it almost triggered people to then message me to realise what they should have done like four years ago. So sometimes it's just delayed reaction for people. And sometimes I think people don't have the empathy. And I think this works in a lot of the world where until they feel it themselves or until they get discriminated against or until they get left out of a team, that's when people react. But I think on a positive side, on a positive side, I will accept people's apologies because, you know, I don't walk around and see people and be like, oh, no, stay away from me. I work in the industry. I'm going to have to see people that I might not want to see. But I do think it's good that some people have reacted maybe five years too late, but they have reacted. Yeah, I just wanted to just go through my head is that this is a situation that's happened on a not in a professional environment, not in international stage where billions are watching not even in a Premier League ground. This, uh, and this is the, the bit for me that I've, I find really challenging because I'm, that's classed as grassroots. So that drama is based around grassroots. It's based around young people. It's uh, based around the, the experiences and, and the, the empowerment that, and I don't really want to say that, but I'm going to, in which the bravery, sorry, should be the word, in which was shown to call the situation out and the bravery to do the right thing the said right thing to walk off a field of play. This is a totally different dynamic when it when it's in grassroots. It's a totally different dynamic when it's in non-league football, because the cameras are not there, the stewards are not there, the the you know the conversation, the comment is not there. This is a, a conversation at grassroots that you you kind of have alone, and you battle against your own will to be able to describe the situation that has this happened, to try and then convince people that what you heard, and when I say people, I mean people in authority, the fans, the, the your teammates, the opposition, that what was angled at you, what was said to you, was factual, because that's what you heard. And I think there needs to be much more support in the grassroots arena, um, from all of our bodies, by the way, um, that affect the grassroots arena, to support young people, coaches, anybody in that environment, so that their words are believed and actioned on. Because like I said, if you was a footballer, that experience that you experienced, forget that it's a drama, will now go into your adult life. It now defines you. You know, so when I talk to players, players talk to me about experiences, you know, if the players could be 18, 19, 20, they talk to me about experience from when they were six or seven and say, that didn't affect me. But it stays there, it must affect you because it's there and it's playing on your mind, and it will come out if there's an open f you know, opportunity to speak like this. So that, that situation there, and like I said to you, it, it triggered my emotions. It's the kind of things that we, that the game, we collectively need to take on board and deal with uh, more effectively than what probably has done. Because if there's one situation like that, there's <laughs> quite a lot. Um, and there's quite a lot of people that will be feeling going back into their general, going back to school, going back home, unable to share the importance of what happened. Um, and I think this drama will do massive amounts to help support people that have been victimised in that way.